Thank you for coming. I'm glad you guys are interested in Google Classroom. I wasn't until very recently, and now I'm so glad that I got into it that I was eager to share with other art teachers um, why I think it's so, it adds a lot of value in my classroom. Just quick background, I didn't like the idea of having a lot of content online, partly because we have competing private high schools in town that I don't want <laughs> everything I do to be able to be, you know, downloaded. But classroom, Google Classroom really does kind of protect your content um, to the users within the organization. And, you know, as soon as people are done with your class, you just archive the classroom and kind of kick them out and you're, you're covered that way. Um, but also I've just, I, I think that the art room is, is particularly sacred as far as doing things together, which, you know, the more online education I see, the less of that beautiful collective work um, I see happening. And that makes me nervous. I don't want things to be too, you know, just feel too much like they're on the computer and less like they're in a room with other people. But um, this year, my school switched to block scheduling. So I was only going to see students every other day. And I thought if I'm going to try it, now's the time because It'll really help me stay organized, just, you know, having different classes on different days. So I'll show you, you know, how I use it and then how to use it a little bit. I think a lot of it is pretty easy to figure out on your own or ironically, you just Google it. <laughs> I made a joke with my colleagues today about how often I have to Google how to use Google products, but you know, the answers are out there because lots of people are using it. So that's a help. But really the first time I knew nothing about it, but I wanted to try it. So I had to Google, Google Classroom, <laughs> and then it came up, fortunately, because I did not see it on my list of apps, even under the More tab at that point. I still don't. So, you know, if you're used to being able to find things here, um, it's not going to be on that short list. So I just Googled Google Classroom and I went to what at the time was a blank space where I could start a new class. And um, that I found out was pretty easy to do. I created my first class and added the students to it and we started. So I'll show you. Um, well, it helps also, I should say, that we are a Google organization, meaning that we've switched all of our, our server stuff is now on Google Drive. So that's that's helpful. The kids already kind of speak Google. Um, we also, all of our email is run through Gmail, which I think more and more districts are doing because it's a big cost saver. So, I, I, you know, if your school hasn't done that yet, I bet they'll be considering it in the near future. Um, oh, the other factor, we recently had our kids all get Chromebooks, which, so we're on a one-to-one -one initiative, which we had never been before, um, and that was exciting, but I really could do this without kids all having their own device. I mean, they can access Classroom from a smartphone, um, or just even using the, the seven computers, that desktop computers that I have in my room could potentially be enough. It does speed things up that they all have their own devices, but I think they're... I don't think that this resource should be written off if you don't if you're not a Google organization and you don't have one to one I still think it's pretty valuable. So I'll show you how I use it starting with the most basic. Um I teach an autistic support art class with just a couple of students and with this I literally am just kind of tracking what we're doing, what we're trying because I it's always just an experiment with these guys to see what works on that day. And then if I have time or if, you know, if we can do it together, these students are able to use their devices to upload some things. We'll try to document what they've done within classroom. So I usually can photograph or scan. I mean, in this case, it's digital art and that's great. Um, but other times I've just added uh, photographs of their work to show what we did and kind of remind myself how it went. So here's one where I posted the YouTube video that the students could watch how it was done in addition to demo, you know, doing a live demo for them. And then I was able to record our results. Um, or actually, I think the students and I worked together to take photographs and upload them into Classroom. I think for this one, I might have done the uploading. But um, a lot of the classes I'll talk tonight are media arts-based classes. I teach advanced photography and I teach a filmmaking class. 
but I really think that this is a valuable platform, even if you're teaching um, two-dimensional stuff that is not media-based. It's, I think, for the purpose of sharing resources, tracking assignments, scoring assignments, giving feedback, and recording what's done, I think it's it's very valuable. And I've been thinking a lot about my colleagues who need their students more and more, especially in high school, to be able to um, photograph their own work in a high quality way. Um, this kind of forces them to do that, whether they want to use it for a portfolio piece or if they want to um, just have a digital copy of it because who knows what might happen to the physical copy of it I think this is really good for that for them to archive and track their own work and it sort of forces them to get themselves organized and record some things they do so that's its absolute most general purpose is this um, autistic support art class where I just kind of post what we're going to do and then some of the time actually post the results and maybe give some feedback um, so I also teach a semester-long cinema arts class. I'll show you both of those in a minute. And I teach a photography class that's year-long where I'm using this probably the most heavily, where I'm using Google Classroom the most heavily. So I'll save that one for last. But I also am the department coordinator for the art department in State College. There are 17 of us. And I, at some point this year, decided I really wanted this classroom for us as a department. I would really like if my principal would start a classroom for the entire high school, mostly for this reason. When you get an email from an administrator or a department chair and you, you know, you read it, you think about it, you move on with your life. And then, you know, three weeks later, you need to reference something in that email and you have to search your email for it. Um, that can be hit or miss, it seems, anymore, especially with Gmail. I, sometimes I can find it, sometimes I can't. I can't remember who it came from or whatever key terms I need to find it. Um, so I decided, because my I had a lot of department members saying to me, I know you sent an email, but I can't find it. What was blank? And since I've started a classroom, that conversation hasn't happened. Um, because I don't send them emails. I just post into this classroom, which is when we started it, which was just in November. Um, I post anything important or even just unimportant, you know, sort of poster contests that they might want to look at. I post it all here so that they know where to find it. And they can post here too, of course, which is great. Um, when somebody has an article they want to share with the department, this is a good way to put it out there. Um, and that way, instead of having to do professional development as your inbox demands, you've kind of got a resource when you find yourself with 15 minutes that you can read an article. You know that your colleagues have posted some, you know where to find them, and you can go through and look. So I, I love that even just for our department to communicate. So that's another relatively simple use of Google Classroom without even talking about a class. You'll notice the structure of Google Classroom is that you've got the stream where everybody's comments post. Um, the students page is just for the teacher to manage um, who's invited. You know, this is where you would invite all of your students and where you manage them. If, if kids drop or move, you remove them here. Um, people come along, you invite them. Um, but it's also a good way to, uh, like I can check them all and email all of them if I did want to send something in an email instead of just posting it to classroom. Oh. I should also say that when I post something into the stream, which looks like this, I would usually, in the case of my department, I would create an announcement or a question instead of an assignment. When I, when I create this announcement and add the link or whatever it is I need them to have, they do get an email notifying them that something's been added. They can turn those emails off. Like my students who have, you know, they might have eight different teachers using Google Classroom, that's a lot of email for them, so they maybe shut the email notifications off and they know to go check Classroom when they need to. But um, that's how the functionality on the quote-unquote student end is that you can have email notifications or not. You can install the app on a smartphone and get push notifications on your phone too when something posts. Some students, can, I guess, can do I that. Ask a question of course. Real quick, Daniel? Yeah. Um, now, do, do the students. And or the people uh, install that. Like when you ask them, do you say, do they when they when they apply to this stream, do they 
install their addresses, or is that up to you? Does, it, does that make sense? Um, that when I invite them, you know where, they, where their emails are. I invite them through their email address. And as I mentioned, although our email address is scasd.org, we're actually running that through Gmail. So it's it's pretty streamlined. All the kids that go to my school are in in this directory. So if I start to type somebody's last name, you know, there it will come up. Um, I guess I might have to search it, and then I find the right kid and select them. So yeah, the the other way to invite students to the room is to email this code to them. You can select this code and email it through whatever email server you want to and then they click on the code and it, it puts them into classroom and they accept the invitation and join the classroom. But I, I've so far I've liked every time I've set up a classroom I've done it manually as a way of reading over their names before they show up so that's nice. Um, the third tab in classroom is this about tab where you know you keep the most pertinent information and for my department that's just one link to a running Google Doc of our agenda and minutes for all of our meetings and in-service time throughout the year. This schedule at the top changes every year but the agenda and minutes of course just you know rolls on and on and this is uh, six years of minutes so you know when somebody new joins the department they can should they choose to read through six years of our conversation and get a sense of what we've been talking about and what goes on. So I love that, that that's always accessible to people. Okay, so now let's actually talk about how I use it for class. And I'll start with this cinema arts class that wrapped up um, just a couple weeks ago. It was a semester class, so we can kind of look at it from beginning to end. Of course, the most recent posts are at the top of the stream just like any other kind of social media f um, feed. So like the last thing that a kid posted was just this video that was actually hilarious. Um, that was the last thing we watched. It was really fun. I also used it to give a survey. Uh, at the, I don't know if you guys do this at the end of the semester, just survey your class to see, you know, what how I can show you what's on it. I What's the best part of your experience, the worst part, rate your learning, and most useful... Um, what do you wish you had learned that you didn't and what suggestions do you have and you can either if you're using a Google survey to do this you can either record the username as they fill it out or let it be anonymous and get really honest feedback which is what I choose to do and then that's all collected into a spreadsheet for you to look at. Diane and I used one you know to register for this little session tonight you you did a Google, Google survey so you can post that kind of thing in classroom and Students know how to access it and um, respond to it. So as you look through our stream, you'll see a lot of the things that the students posted for us to watch, especially towards the end. Um, I'll get to an assignment. So when I give an assignment, they were to review a film. I explain it to them in real life, but then I add all of the resources here as well um, when I make the initial assignment post which just is initiated by hitting this plus and saying create assignment you title it give instructions and then you can add any files or drive items YouTube videos or external links and then hit assign one awkward thing is that after you hit assign then you have to go back to the assignment and assign the point value it kind of defaults to a hundred points so I always have to go back in and change it so um, so all of the resources are there under the tab of the assignment as the students do the assignment, which in this case was just a couple of slides to give a review. On their end, they link those Google Slides and say turn in, and then they all show up for me here as done. This has been one of my favorite things, is that I can just see who's done and who isn't. It sounds so simple, but you know, I don't have to nag anyone or constantly ask you know, I used to spend a lot of time, I think, asking who was done with what and who needed to do what, and now that's all pretty well organized for me. I've started to use these even for little things like ungraded things like turning in a form I need a signature on, and then I can go through and click them off as done when they, it's been turned in, and then I'll know who to nag for that form next time they come in. And, and I'll show you in another class, 
I can easily email those kids to say, don't forget to bring your form tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to do that later in this demo. Um, it's not always assignments. You can just ask questions. I guess I did make this as an assignment, even though I'm pretty sure it was ungraded. Sometimes we just don't get enough time for conversation. So that can extend past the classroom block. Um, digitally, just kids are able to post their responses and respond to one another within either an announcement or a question or an assignment. I'm, I'm pretty confident that one would have been ungraded, right? But I did want to see who responded and who didn't, so I structured it as an assignment. So that's some of the functionality that I love um, in a reasonably simple way that students can, you know, I have all the resources in the same place, they, and they know that with every assignment, they know where to find it. Um, I can see who's done, who isn't. I can also give them a, a better quality of feedback as I'm grading. Um, and then I have an opportunity to say anything that I didn't say on his grade sheet or to him in person, um, you know, if it's something kind of generic even, so they, they know that you're paying attention, or if you want to get into better specific feedback that they'll read and not leave pieces of paper all over your room with your feedback. Um, you can just hit post and then they get it. And uh, I really like that about it. So this, yeah, this is the class that's finished. And soon, um, I think since that class has wrapped, I will be able to uh, archive this class, and then it won't be on my main page, my classroom page that you are seeing. I can archive it, and it's a it's off of this list. But I can go back and see their work and see um, even like the links that they post. I do a lot of assignments where I just ask them to um, find something to watch that has a lot of aesthetic value, and then they'll post a link and and they'll post. Um, a comment explaining why they picked it and that's been really fun and pretty easy for both of us for them and for me and I'm thinking you know if you teach a, a 2D type of class and you ask students to gather um, inspirational images this would be a good way for them to show you what they're looking at to inform what they're choosing to do so this is a class that I'm ready to archive um, and then the new section as it started as I mentioned, so I have two forms I need them to sign right at the beginning of the year, allowing us to watch YouTube together and for them to be able to sign out cameras. And they're coming in tomorrow. So these five who haven't returned their forms, I promise to remind them. And I just click on the not done. It selects all five of them. And I can click this email button and it opens up my Gmail account. And I have, it's of course blind bcc to them. And done. No, no more nagging. I don't have to nag them tomorrow in class. It's done. <laughs> my, my nagging is done from home the evening before, which is probably more effective. So that's something I love about classroom. <clears throat> Um, and they're starting to turn in their aesthetics clip that one of our early assignments and this allows me to kind of pre-screen what they're selecting for the class to watch so that <coughs> I can make sure it's appropriate before class time, which used to be a problem for me, finding out during class that what they had selected was not appropriate for school. Um, and then you know, I'm starting to just post some resources as they're getting started with the software that we use in class, Adobe Premiere. And uh, I did not do a screen recording for this one, but I probably will tomorrow when I do it the second time so that I only have to do it twice. And if anybody's missed both classes, they're on their own to figure it out from there. Um, I, did, I didn't show you this in the other cinema arts group, but under the About tab for these classes, I, do, I keep a couple of important things. The syllabus, if they ever want to go back and look at that, of course, it's. I also know where it is for... Um, the beginning of the year, and, um, you know, if they just want to go back and see it, it's not a piece of paper that they lost three months ago, they can go back and remind themselves what the goals of the class are, and, you know, how I describe it, um, and I, I like for my kids to reread this, because I ask them to 
approach class like they're waiting, snorkeling, or scuba diving, and, and we have a little conversation about you may have different levels of mental energy that you're able to commit to the class, um, and you can still get an A waiting. You just it won't be as memorable of an experience for you, but if this is your thing and you want to scuba dive, here's how, and I can use these terms throughout the year and remind them what they're doing. And classroom really is a great place for the scuba divers, too, where they want to keep talking to one another about films or about process outside of the class. They can. They have a, a platform to do that. I'm not really big on the mandatory talk about, make a comment about something because I've taken online classes before just for grad school and that's awful <laughs> to me. Uh, that kind of forced conversation is, I've always found it pretty painful both to participate in and, uh, and to read. So um, I don't force that, but it's an option for the, the kids that, you know, just want to keep talking or make extra stuff and want to show somebody they can do it here. The other important document that I keep on my class about tab is our rotation and this is just a regular Google Doc that um, will rotate or, or be updated constantly so whatever it is that we're doing with our time that day um, and however we're splitting up the groups because we always need to and I'll post kind of a quick lesson plan that's there and again that's great for the kids who are in class but also good for the kids who miss class to go through and see oh that's what I'm missing today now I know um, so the even more, <coughs> I'm sorry, that's okay, it's all right, go ahead. Yeah, um, it is, I have another one in photography I can show you, but I do use drawing, uh, the drawing function in Google Docs, uh, just because I think the designer in me can't handle the kind of boring, <laughs> look of a document so you know if that's I've become pretty interested in all Google tools um, not just because of classroom and like I said we've already been working on Google tools for a while but um, they really the more you know about the more Google tools the more useful classroom will be for you so if you've never used drawing in a document um, it's a good way to drop in a an image or you know, some kind of fancier shape, and then that just becomes part of your document. So if you want to up the look of your documents that you're publishing for your kids, um, I, just inserting those drawings is a really good way to do it. So let's get back here. I have the same, a similar kind of rotation document for my photography class. Now this is the year-long advanced class, and um, we've been at this longer. They were also the first ones I started with. I have one other thing on the About tab for this class that I'll show you in a minute. So it's the same concept. I post announcements, I post assignments along with the resources that they need. Um, you know, we're doing an assignment now that may fit in with a contest they want to enter. I can put both links there. Um, we do lots of, you know, follow what these people do on YouTube, and then we try to do it together in real life. Uh, just inspiration for assignments. They do a portrait of their alter ego, and we look at Cindy Sherman's work for that. Um, so I'll show you how it looks. Now, when we were critiquing these at first, I was really struggling with two things. One, it's a little clunky to open this image and then close it and go back to, um, you know, then back to the list and the next one. But a bigger struggle I was having is once I had partially graded an assignment and a couple late ones came in and I wanted to look at them during critique, I didn't have an easy way to hide all of these grades, which was a problem. So I, um, I worked with our instructional technology coach at the high school to come up with a solution that I'm really pleased with. So I want to share that with you. So under the About tab, um, one of the things, it's the kind of like links you're going to have to reference over and over again. That's what I keep under About. I started a Google site, which I had never dealt with Google Sites before. It's not the easiest of Google tools, but um, it's still easier than lots of other website builders. You know, Google does strive to make things pretty intuitive. 
Um, so I started a Google site, but what I wanted to do was collect all of their photographs and put them into an album we could look at before critique. So, you know, the work was already due and I wanted all assembled and out of classroom for us to go through and look at it. Um, and just be able to critique this way. In fact, I love this because we can actually see the EXIF data if we want to. We can also hide that if we want to just pay attention to the images. But I, you know, sometimes we just need to see who made it, um, or I actually have to fill that in. So I'll show you how I start these albums. This is part of Google Photo functionality, which I just discovered when I talked to this IT coach. Um, but in showing you this, you'll also understand how Classroom organizes your files for you. So I'll just make a mock album. Um, I now, by the way, now that I understand Google Photos, which is a truly unlimited, there's no like terabyte like Flickr used to give you, it's actually unlimited storage for anyone. So I now use this personally. Everything, I, Every photo and video I take on my phone goes right to Google Photos so that my phone's not constantly out of space, which is a problem a lot of us probably have. Um, but I also, so I, that's on my personal Gmail address. But with my work address, I have a separate Google Photo account that's just automatic. Um, and I put all sorts of stuff in it, like, for instance, as, you know, I have that department page. We have a big department show with 170 K-12 pieces that I photograph with the label information so we can sort of index it. And I put that all into an album and link it to that department page so everybody knows where to find the images for that. Um, and all of my student work will live here from now on. I've tried lots of different ways of archiving student photos and videos and most of them involved you know, taking up some sort of hard drive space somewhere, but I'm just done with that now because of Google Photos. So I'm really excited about that. And there's even some decent, like, editing functionality in here. Um, you know, it's it's no Photoshop, if you know Photoshop, but you can brighten something up and do what whatever Google considers giving it pop, I guess, upping the contrast a little bit, or if it's, you know, play around with saturation. Um, and then they've got the kind of Instagram-y filters built into, and you can just do a general crop and save. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with Google Photos. I'm really glad that I figured out how to use it. And this is what it looks like when I make one of these albums for critique for my class. I go to the Upload button, and I, um, you, you could, I think, bring it, bring it in right from Google Drive, but Google Drive is a little bit separate from Google Photos. It's not like... Google Photos is automatically archiving your photos and videos. You have to move them into Google Photos from Drive or from a hard drive. So what I decided to do, I know, I, hopefully you know this about Google Drive, if, if you're using Google Drive, that you can sync certain folders in Google Drive with the hard drive of your computer. And just kind of for safety's sake, while I have a class, I do sync the classroom folder. This um, just invisibly, as I was, as I, as soon as I start a class, it makes a folder for me in Google Drive inside this classroom folder. So here's my advanced photography class. Every time I post an assignment into photography, that stream, it automatically makes this folder for me. And as students are turning in work, it's just automatically putting their image into this folder for me. So this is how I, I then access all of their images and upload them into Google Photos in a pretty organized way. Now, that already exists, so let me think of something maybe that I'll start a folder for um, their one of their newer assignments, which is Glitter, with an exclamation point. That's not due yet, so I only have three, but I'll take them and upload them, which will go pretty quickly with just three images. Oh, one of the catches, by the way, to Google Photos is that to have the unlimited space, it's not the highest resolution that some cameras have. It's certainly higher than most phones. Um, and actually, my Canon 60Ds in large setting, it still hasn't maxed out the resolution. I don't know what their upper limit on resolution is for Google Photos, but I, I don't think I'm going to hit it or worry about it because I'm not printing things um, you know, on billboards at this point. Okay, so I've uploaded these three glitter photos, and I'm going to add them to an album. I'm going to make a new album and call it Glitter. 
I will copy that link. Now normally I wouldn't do this until I did have everyone's um, photo, like after the due date. What I really love now that we do this system is that if my students miss a due date, they have to add the photo to the album themselves, which is a hassle they like to avoid. So it seems like they're working a little harder to get things in on time. They would rather avoid that hassle than get the couple of points that they miss for being late, I guess. All right, so let me go back to that Google site that I had. Just back a few levels, I think. Actually, I'm just going to go to back to this link. Um, this will be one of the first critiques on our new nine weeks. Glitter, and that I think is due oh soon, I don't know, I'll say the fifth. And I'll just post the link to that album that I just created and we're good to go. Then as we're going through critique, I will make sure the appropriate name is in there because at this point, it looks like I'm the owner of the images. Um, so we'll fix that collectively. I think there's probably a better way to do that, but uh, we haven't figured it out yet. But I'm really happy with this system. One other thing I love about... Uh, oh, I think I need to save. I, that I'm really enjoying about um, Classroom for this class is I always, I've always had students keep some sort of process journal and it's fallen kind of short of what I want it to do, how I want it to, the function I want it to serve for students. So um, this year we're getting closer than ever because of classroom, because I'm now, instead of having them do this on some sort of paper notebook that we keep, um, I'm having them start an electronic Google Doc that they just post the link every time they post an assignment. So Here's a student who, she's turned in the images for her assignment, and then in the private comments, she posted this link to her Google Doc that I can go into, um, and, and they've handled this different ways. I've encouraged them to do it my way, but you know, kids are kids, they're gonna try their own ways. She's doing a different document for every assignment, which is fine, it's not the way I'll recommend, I'll show you kind of the way I recommend it. But as I'm grading the assignments, I get to read about their intentions and then their process and usually their assessment of um, how they think they did as well. She just didn't comment that time. Let me look at Hannah's. Hannah keeps a beautiful process journal. It's exactly how I ask it to be. The most recent assignment at the top, a screen cap of the image that she used, and, and she's really a great on-paper thinker. She'll even like do strike through on her changing her mind about what she was going to do and have animated GIFs in the process journal, which wasn't an option when we were doing these on paper. So um, that's just, it's something I really like. Again, I like that my students are now having this kind of forced into archiving their own process um, and their own Google Drive that will they'll have after the class, but then I get to glimpse into how the process is working for them as well. So this, this class is definitely my most advanced use of Google Classroom, but as I've mentioned, I think that it, it can work really well at any level, even if you're just using it to share resources with your students um, and collect something from them, comments or, um, you know, <clears throat> inspiration. Oh, one other thing that my students do, they keep two running Google documents for me or for this class. One is their own process journal and one is their... Journal of Inspiration, where they're just now starting to write more formal critiques, but we've used it for other things too. It's just kind of a place to dump images that they're inspired by, um, and now they'll start writing about those. But I also had them turn that link in one time just to give me ideas of what they might want to do in the upcoming semester. And so we'll take a look at somebody's, let's look at Elise's inspiration document. Um, and then we'll, you know, they'll use that, like in the beginning of the year we were doing pinhole photography and I asked them to just collect some pinhole photographs and dump into their inspiration document and then we were doing levitation. So, so I think this would be relevant if you were just doing kind of sketchbook assignments with a 2D class, get all your source images in a place that you can find um, 
Oh, she's already written her critical response or started it. Good job. So <clears throat> that's another function of it. Um, you know, I've, I've used a lot of systems in the path, past to do the same basic thing using Google Drive to have students turn things in and trying to use my own organizational methods, but um, I've, I've never been more relaxed about my organization um, as I am now with Google Classroom. I'm really pleased with it. So, you know, I hope you guys are here because you're interested in trying it. Um, a few things about the way that you can look at this. I was just showing Diane that I can look at just the work that I'm giving. I can get a list of the assignments for all of the classes or just a specific class. So this is that new class so far. They only have two assignments. I can look at what, what were all of the assignments I gave Cinema Arts last semester and then go through and look at how students did with those, um, what kind of grades they got. That's all pretty helpful. Um, there's a calendar that automatically, when I post an assignment <clears throat> and add the due date to it, <clears throat> it shows up on, on my Google Cal, which is synced between my phone and computer, and students can have the same thing so that they can have a calendar notification telling them what's due on what day, which I think is great to help them get organized. Um, let's see, let me go back to just a classroom to show you some other functionality. You can invite teachers, Diane, and I just figured out that the teachers have to be in the same organization. So I have to, it has to be someone with a SCASD.org address because I, I wanted to let Diane in to this classroom to look around. Um, <clears throat> but we have to be in the same organization. That is one catch with Google Classroom, I guess, which again is a way of help keeping your intellectual property safe. But um, you, you do all have to be in the same place uh, or you know under the same email in order for it to be connected. I just realized I'm talking with my hands a lot. None of you can see me, so that's being totally wasted. So <laughs> this is what it looks like to start a new class. Just, just so you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm, I'm not as technically competent as I used to be. I notice as I approach my 40s, it's, it's getting a little harder to figure things out. But, um, this I think is really meant for anyone to be able to figure out, and especially if there are other people in your school using it who have already been there, I, I think it's pretty manageable. I don't, I don't foresee people needing a lot of in-service time to get the hang of it. I think if you just start poking around, you can get it. And if your kids are using it at any other place, actually, I, I had quite a mix of kids that had never used it before and kids who used it for several other classes and nobody seemed to struggle. I mean, no, none of the kids really were frustrated with how it worked. Um, we did encounter some problems, like when kids were posting that link <clears throat> with an assignment at one point, the post button wasn't highlighted and we couldn't figure out why, but one of the students figured out you had to zoom out on your browser and then the post would show up. So, you know, we hit snags, but we find workarounds collectively, which is part of the beauty of attending a class together instead of going to virtual school. So anyway, this is what it would look like to start a class. I hit that plus and I'll call it test section one. And I get to choose kind of a visual theme. You can definitely upload your own photos to this bar, which I usually do. But there are some, some lovely themes to choose as well. We'll go with purple bubbles for this. Um, I mean, Google right away wants to give you a tour to show you some of the functionality. Um, or you can just get started. Oh, well, I guess you have to invite students first. So to invite students, as I mentioned earlier, I can either manually, like I'll look at my class list and type out, um, you know, start to type in some names and find the right student and invite them. Or I can just copy this code and email it out to whatever email I'm using so email my class list and have them find it and respond to it and then they just show up in the class and I can start even before they're all here I can start posting announcements assignments or questions and when it's um, you know like cinema arts that I'm going to be teaching every semester I don't want to necessarily have to collect all the resources for something again so I can reuse a post 
it'll give me like a mini view of my feed from Cinema Arts. And I know that this is the same um, assignment that I gave before, so I'll just select it and reuse it and whatever resources or gives me a chance to update the due date and change anything, but any resources that were attached are just there for you. Um, I think that's it. I will say that we don't we don't use this as a district officially, so we don't I think this isn't our official way of keeping our grades. We use eSchool Plus, um, which I know is a pretty popular one for grading. Um, so I do, I mean, I give them their grades in classroom sort of as a courtesy, and I can give them feedback easily there, so I want them to see my feedback next to the grade, but then I end up coming into um, our eSchool Plus grade book and duplicating those grades. I, I don't mind that so much. It gives me a chance to double check my accuracy with grades, um, and it's not so bad. I'll just end up having um, their grade window open. Oh, we get somebody who actually gets graded. One that's done. Okay, so I can use this list and shrink it down. Oops. Apparently not shrink it down too much. Um, and then have my eSchool Plus window separate so that I can see them both. And I'll just go through and duplicate the grades into eSchool Plus. So I don't mind that, but I know some people, some of my colleagues who use Google Classroom aren't adding grades in it, so they don't have to do it twice. Um, I think that's it for me. I'm ready for any kind of questions you have that I can try to answer. Again, I just started it this fall uh, thinking I was testing it out, but I fell in love with it, and I have learned a lot. So if you have some questions, hopefully I have some answers. Can you link a Google Blogspot to this? Um, Google Blogspot is not something I use, but you can link anything. So I I would think. I mean, you you can put it in just as a. Um, I guess that would go up as an announcement. You just want it to be a place where is that a place your students are going to frequently? Or. I don't know. Sue Sue asked that. So pop. Oh, okay. Ongoing. I wonder if they can do that oh. into a class. Yes. Oh, they do a daily log. Yeah, I mean, I would think that maybe that's something you would want to put under the About tab. Just you can post a link here. Any, oops, that's a file. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> a link, uh, uh, the actual web URL to that Google blog. Or, I mean, if it's housed on Drive, again, I don't know how Google Blogspot works, but if it's housed on Drive, you can put it here. But, I mean, any URL that they need to access regularly, I think should go in the About tab. If it's just a, you're going to access it for now and then maybe need to see it later, I would put it in the stream. But the things they're going to all the time, I think, make sense under the About tab. It's not housed on Drive, I see. Okay, so yeah, just the regular web link should function just fine. And the they're already logged in, I assume, Susan, into their Google account. So um, they're logged into their account to be in Classroom, so they'll automatically be logged in for their blog spot. Susan, is your school a Google organization? Like, do you do your emails through Google? I'm not even really sure how much that matters. Okay, your university is. That's good. Yeah, I think this is a particularly useful way for university students who aren't meeting daily to stay organized with what they do. And I I think it really would help a student for a whole organization to switch to this system and use it um, effectively. So students kind of have their calendar of due dates automatically fed to them. Maybe it spoils them or, or enables them or something or cripples their ability to make their own <laughs> um, organizational system. But I don't know, it's it's also easy to hold them accountable when they have no excuses for not being able to find what you you gave them. And it kind of works as their organizational structure too. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, one one problem we do have with being a Google organization is that you know our kids graduate and then we take away that email address and all of their drive content. So we do have to do a little extra teaching on how to 
um, get in the habit of archiving their own stuff on their personal Google Drive so that when they graduate, it's not a total shock that they lose all of that. We have some stuff to help them migrate it. But I've actually been more and more asking my class to, um, like with Google Photos, they can add to to our album from their personal Google address. So I'm telling them to put all of their images in their in their own private um, Google photo, since that's the one they'll take with them when they graduate, and then link them back into Classroom from there, and that's working well. You coach your students to go to their name, http gmail.com. Huh. So that sounds like what you're doing too. You're sending them there and then into the school system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> there are certain things that are uh, harder for them to access. You know, they maybe don't want to switch back and forth between logins, but. Oh, okay, I get it, Susan. You're just telling them, yes, they need to create their own Gmail account or Google account. Yeah, that's I do the same, for, as our, especially as our students approach high school. I mean, it's great. Our kids in kindergarten have a, a Gmail account, you know what I mean, just by having an email address with the district. So it's a good way to get them started, and they've got this kind of archive of all of their work through the years. But... Um, yeah, some of them are shocked to find out we're kicking them out of the nest after graduation and they've got to find a way to get all of their stuff that they want to keep. Again, I really appreciate the idea of Google Classroom in a 2D or 3D type of environment where you get to sort of force students to learn to take good photographs of their work, which is a competency that I think all artists need to have um, in order to digitalize them and account for them through Classroom and then Voila, they already have a digital portfolio built for themselves, too. That's a good point, too. Does anybody else have any other questions? I think, I think she just changed our, she changed our life, Diane. <laughs> I think so, too. I think so, too. Uh, that, that's definitely how I felt about it. In a good way, uh, in a good way Danielle. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... um. That we have access to this now, we just have to use it. We just have to get started. It's a no-brainer. I mean, we're, we're, we're I'm sending a flash drive around with kids to get stuff to turn stuff in. So this is uh, this is going to be a lot easier once uh, we, we can solve, you know, navigate it and, and, and teach it to the kids. It's, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Good. Yeah, I think my attitude about it may have been very different had somebody said, you have to use this now. <laughs> but I just realized on my own I really needed to, needed something. You know, I have a, a colleague. The question for me was, was when you started and when you said it was this fall, then I figured, well, then that's, I, I could somehow manage it myself if I just sit down and start clicking. But believe I, I, I didn't even know where to start. And I've already, I know tenfold what I do. An hour ago. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And I um, I don't think you'll regret it. I think once you get started, you'll really enjoy it. But, you know, speaking of passing the USB drive, I have a colleague that has been holding out because she, she passes the USB drive to her photography students because she wants their EXIF data. So now that there's Google Photo and the EXIF data is right there, she's she's got no excuse really now. This is... This just has to happen. I mean, it's definitely the best system I've encountered so far. Okay, I thank you. I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything. Um, I appreciate your time, Danielle, and this is great. If we can try and archive this for the folks who couldn't make it, uh, I think that would be wonderful. And plus for myself to come back and do a little bit of review as well. Sure, yeah, and please don't be afraid to contact me. Thank you. Good, oh, I'm really glad some people are motivated to, to get using it. I think that's that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> I hope it spreads. I think there's some there's something about art where we think like, oh no, we're not online people, that's not us, but um, you know, I don't want us to miss out. <laughs> so I think this is good for us and good for our kids. If you're wondering how to delete a class, like that test class I just made, I had to archive it first, which 
is just a matter of hitting this fold or going to this and saying archive. And then I have to go navigate in drive to that folder and delete it. That's on purpose that Google makes it really, you know, two steps to delete it so that you can't kind of accidentally delete a class, um, which I thought was very thoughtful of Google because I'm sure it would be devastating if you just accidentally deleted a class that was in progress. So they make that a little more challenging. And, um, you know, I figured that out by Googling. That's amazing, like I said, how much I have to Google about how to use Google. <laughs> but these tools get really more advanced, and fortunately enough, people are using them that the answer is always out there.